Copperheads are one of the more common venomous snakes in America and are responsible for the most snake bites from any venomous snake in the country. Today we are taking a deep dive into copperheads, including that it's baby copperhead season, as I record this in early September. The beautiful, although a bit menacing looking copperhead, has a distinctive hourglass pattern. Hi, I'm Amy, and welcome to my channel where we talk about wildlife conservation and organic gardening. Copperhead venom is not that potent and rarely causes fatalities. The, ve the venom is hemolytic, which means it breaks down blood cells. Here is the result of a young copperhead bite, swelling and some nasty bruising and a lot of pain. You can see the puncture marks. Obviously, any snake bite needs medical care. Here's a fun fact. Copperheads can have a dry bite, which is a bite without using their fangs or venom. They would do this as a warning bite and to conserve venom. A couple of cool facts. Copperheads may go through several sets of fangs in their lifetime. Each snake has a series of five to seven replacement fangs. These are located in their gums right behind their current fangs. Once the copperhead injects their venom, they need one to two weeks to replace it. Copperheads are common in the eastern and central U.S. They are state endangered in Iowa and Massachusetts. While they typically live in deciduous forests, they have adapted to more urban suburbs and developed areas. One reason they have the highest bite averages, they live more commonly among people. Copperheads are pit vipers and can be identified by the triangular head and vertical pupils. As pit vipers, they have facial pits that sense heat. They use these to locate prey as well as predators. Male copperheads are larger than females and average three feet long. Copperheads are opportunistic and ambush predators. They eat a variety of amphibians, lizards, other snakes, small mammals, and birds. In a minute, we'll talk about how they swallow their prey whole. Copperheads are good swimmers and will catch fish. In my research, copperheads are often described as stout. This guy or girl is quite stout even knowing that they are eating what appears to be a good size. Copperheads mate in the spring, and females give live birth in late summer and early fall. About five to nine babies are born, each within its own membrane. The young are born with fangs that have venom. Juveniles look just like adults, except for the tail. The best way to identify a young copperhead is by its yellow tail. They keep this yellow tail for the first two or three years of their life. It serves an important purpose in that it helps to lure prey closer to the body. Babies are born about eight inches long and about the thickness of a marker. They eat mostly insects in their first year. Maybe this baby copperhead knows toads are a food source but is contemplating how big it is. Opossums have a natural immunity to snake venom and will hunt and eat copperheads. Other predators are hawks, owls, and bigger snakes. I would never tell anyone to not go hiking. The chances of you seeing a copperhead are slim. Keep your eyes open and pay attention. Copperheads are not aggressive and typically only strike if touched or harassed. They rely on their superb camouflage to keep themselves safe. You should always use caution. Stay on the trails, supervise your children, keep dogs on a leash. Don't approach a snake and give them wide room if they are sunning themselves on the trail. A tip I have is to wear sturdy hiking boots. That way you have some protection if you accidentally step on a snake. There are five subspecies, although scientists are thinking maybe more, with ongoing testing. This is the Osage copperhead found in Kansas and Nebraska. 
Other non-venomous snake species are often mistaken and sometimes killed because people think they are a copperhead. First, there is no reason to kill a snake. All snakes have value to the ecosystem. Second, learn to identify the snakes in your area. You may find a snake skin while hiking. Their skin does not grow with them, so they shed it to keep growing. Also, shedding helps them to get rid of bacteria and parasites. A few days ago, I made a video on garter snakes. And by the way, thanks so much to everyone for viewing. It's been really popular. Anyway, I used the word unhinged to describe the snake's jaw process when eating, and a couple of people took offense. That term was used in a National Geographic article that I quoted, so I figured it would be good to look into it more closely. This is the skeleton of a gaboon viper, a large African snake, but it gives us a good view of the lower jaw. We can see the lower bones of the jaw, or mandibles, are not connected like they are in mammals. Instead, they are attached by stretchy ligaments. The snake can spread the mandibles apart laterally, increasing the width of the mouth. So no, they don't unhinge. The University of Louisiana's herpetology department compared it to us being able to shove a humongous sub in our mouth and swallow it whole. The point of this video was to be helpful. If you have gotten this far, thank you for watching. Please hit the thumbs up because it really does help me out and helps to accomplish our educational mission. Thanks again and have a fabulous sunny day.